Oh, that's there too early. We'll take that down for a second. Hi there, my name is Aaron Short. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is July the 22nd. I think I'm fully recovered from Summer Nam. I'm not sure. I think I am. It's been a couple of days. I've been at home. I've actually been testing some gear that may be appearing in the next couple of weeks, but I won't say anything until then. So if you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell and keep an eye out for that. So the NAM show was great. I'm not going to talk about it too much in this episode. I spoke about it in detail on Monday with Maury. If you missed the episode, go and check it out. The Monday show is about Martin guitars usually and sometimes some other guitar related content. But this Monday we did a pretty in-depth discussion about our thoughts on some of them. So go and check that one out later on. I will mention it in passing tonight. And after I've done my spiel on on song, uh, feel free to ask me about it if you're here and want to know about it. So what happened was I arrived in Nashville. We arrived in Nashville, went to a uh, get together on the first night and I ran into the guys from Onsong. So Onsong do a lot with the worship community and that's because their app is ideal for that. And I'll show you why as we go along. But I've become friends with them. I've had them on my channel a couple of times. I've been in their newsletters and things. I've just got to know them through the NAM shows I've attended because I do use their app all the time, or at least I did use it all the time before we locked down in New York. And I'll, tell you, I'll show you how I use it as well. It's really, really invaluable to me when I'm performing. So I saw my, my buddy Dakota. He does a lot of the marketing there. And they've given me an affiliate link. And that's why I was going to go live on the Thursday showcase and talk about Onsong anyway. And then when they gave me the affiliate link, I thought, well, I'll do it this week. So if you look in the chat, I've put the link. It's also down in the description. If you have an iOS device, and you, and you need a, a way to remember lyrics and, and chords, and you haven't tried on song, click on that link and download the app. I'm not exactly sure how it works these days. I got mine years ago, and I think it was a one-off fee. I think now there may be some subscription and paid for parts of it, but I think you can download a free version just to try it out and check it out as well. So if you haven't ever used on song and you use an iOS device, Definitely, definitely, definitely download it and try it. If you end up loving it, you can um, pay for the upgrades and I will get a slight commission at no, at no extra cost to you. <laughs> but anyway, this Thursday is really to talk about things that I do use day to day. And like I said, this is something, so I'm being serious though, this is something that I use all the time. When I started playing the guitar years ago, I would memorize songs and let me know in the comments and the chat if you how you feel about this. Are you the kind of performer that has the lyrics in front of you or are you the kind of performer that memorizes songs? When I was a kid, I would memorize my songs, but I didn't play as many songs as I play now, but I would memorize them and I would not use any lyrics or chords. Now, of course, there are some gigs where you need to use lyrics and chords, right? We know that. Um, what happened was I moved to America and I had to learn all these new country songs, all these new songs. So I started using lyrics. But one thing that is a pet peeve of mine is when performers have those big binders on a music stand in front of them like this, or at least over their guitar like this. That really drives me crazy because you're blocking the view of the audience and the audience might want to watch you play, watch your fingers move, see the expression on your face. It's a total distraction. I, I really, I'm sorry, if you use those things, I'm sorry, I, I really have a problem with them. I think a really good compromise around that is an iPad. Again, be careful, like if you have it too high up, it can block the view. Some people have those big iPads in front of their guitar. Maybe some people have it down lower, then you have to look down at it. Again, I haven't really used an iPad. I like to use my phone. So this is what I do at gigs. I take my phone, I've got the larger phone, the, the bigger size model, so it is easier to read. But I have a clip that goes on my mic stand, and I'll try to link that below. The ones I use are fantastic, but I got them from Sam Ash. I don't think they sell them anymore, but my clip is really, really cool. Very easy to attach, doesn't mark the mic stand or anything. And I'll put this there, and I saw some photographs of myself. I used to do this as well. And then lately I've been trying to angle it so it's down here, so you don't, so it doesn't block me but I can still read it. And I think that is the perfect compromise because it doesn't block the audience. They don't really see it there, but you've got access to all the songs you know. And as you learn more songs, you may forget them. And also if you've learned a new song, you can throw it in here and use that as your guide. 
I will show the app on the screen. Some other things I like about this is it's very clear to read and it stays open all the time. It doesn't let the phone sleep. So the minute you open that up at the start of the gig, you can play. With some apps, you open them up and they fall asleep. So you might be halfway through a song and the screen goes dark. This won't do that. This will keep the screen on at all times. So that's really, really, really cool. So I'll, sh I'll give you an example of what I've done here. Let me bring it up on the screen. So this is my phone. No, that's not my phone. This is supposed to be my phone. Let me try again. Huh. How weird. It was there a minute ago, wasn't it? Da, da, da. Let me try again. Try again. Try again. That's me twice. That's my phone. That's not working. Let me try it again. One thing about OnSong is it does always work. That's why I've used it for so many years. But unfortunately for streaming, it doesn't seem to be working right. <laughs> when I went live, it was working. Hang on. Let me plug it again. So uh, I'll just talk until I get, figure this out. So um, yeah, it doesn't go to sleep. On my phone, the text is very big. It's very easy to flick through songs. It's very easy to enlarge the songs. And if you watch my interviews with OnSong, the great thing about this app is that you can either use it in the most basic bare bones way possible, or you can use it in the most advanced way possible. And some of the advanced features in this are amazing. And some of those are the paid for features, by the way. But just as a lyric reader, I think this is great for the, really for the simple reasons I mentioned. The fact that it doesn't go to sleep, it keeps everything in one place is really great. Now, a downside to this, I know someone's going to say it, is that I don't think it's on Android. That is obviously a downer because it's not very useful between other people. If everyone in your band and yourself uses an iOS device, this is amazing. If you use Android, as is often the case with these apps, you might have to look elsewhere. All right, let me see what's going on with this thing then. I may have to restart my phone. Like I said, this is not uh, the app's fault. This is uh, either my computer's fault or, <laughs> or um, Ecamm Live's fault. So I'm going to do a full restart and try again on my phone. Yeah, the app has been very, very, very stable for me the whole time. And oh, actually, yeah, I forgot to say, if you use on song, put it in the, in the chat. Tell, let me know your experiences with it. And while I'm rebooting the phone, I'll say hi to our friends. Lee is here. It's after midnight and it's very hot, he says, in England. You're going to have to start getting AC. You see, I've got the AC back there. It's turned off because I don't want the noise on the camera. You have to start getting AC, Lee, if it gets that hot. He says, hi. Good to see you, buddy. Hope you're doing well. And Rosanna's here. Happy Thursday. Yeah, I can't. Where's the time going? Can you believe it's almost August? What is going on? It's nuts. Hey, David, good to see you. Thanks for your comments this week. Ah, good. Thomas Moore, I use OnSong and love it. Our band has it with an HDMI splitter that connects to multiple TVs. Yeah, that's one of the features I wanted to mention. So you can actually send it, or you can run like a karaoke night and send the lyrics to a screen. You can also save backing tracks with each song. So when you load a song, the backing track is there. You hit play, it plays the song. You can store the tempo information for the song. And then you can play like a click so you could um, get the feel. How often have you started the song and you start it too fast? It happens to me a lot. So before you start the song, you could play that click and then just get a feel. It's also not just an audio click, it's a visual click. So you can see it flashing on the screen and you can think, right, as it's flat. Let me, let me show you. Let me get this app working on the, on the display here. So this was working absolutely fine until I went live. Let's see what's happening here. It might be my cable because I have to plug the phone into the uh, to the computer and then it comes up on the screen. Oh, come on. Look, this was working absolutely perfectly all day when I was testing and now it's not coming up on the screen. Absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy. And now the cats are meowing, which they've been doing all day. I've been testing some gear today, which I'm hoping to show off soon. And for some reason, it made the cats just meow and meow and meow like crazy. Oh, this is OK. Am I going to abandon showing this on the screen? I could just do this, but it's not quite as good. 
So I like the dark mode. And you can have it in light mode or dark mode. Come on. There we go. So there's my song. So like I said, you can do as little or as much as you want. So I like to just have the lyrics. Now you could put the chords in there as well. Why would I not put the chords in there? Well, it makes it harder to read, right? It makes the whole thing longer. So you've got to scroll through it or set the auto scroll. I like to set my songs up so they just fill the whole screen. And I can just have it in front of me and I go to that song and I just read it as I go and I'm done. I don't have to scroll or have any auto scroll or anything like that. And you can either set up set this or you can just scroll through with your finger to the next song. Or of course you can click on songs and then search for a song. So <laughs> I really want to get this working. I can't believe this. Hang on. So, so weird. I think it's the cable. You know, you've got to be careful with these cables because when they're not like the official cables, they have so many problems that can go wrong with them. Yeah, anyway, I don't think it's going to work. Okay, fine. So, hmm, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try plugging in the back. One second. said to me I need to get away from you and as I watched her lying next to me I wished for a holiday too <laughs> Maury Rich night moves I think he's loving this are you loving this Maury let me see it says iPhone now let me try it come on oh man it says it's there iPhone, why classic tool? <sighs> Shall I just tell jokes instead and do this again next week? <laughs> oh man, what is happening here? And people are watching. I love it. If any, any, if it was a show where I had everything working, there'd be no one here, and I have people watching, and my phone isn't coming up on eCam Live. It's just absolutely wonderful. <laughs> oh, I know. I'll just try adding the phone one more time here. Hang on, one second. Nope. <laughs> more is like sorry i'm not sure how to look stuff up I'm not sure what to try well it was working absolutely fine you just plug it into the computer and it comes up on the screen and then i plug it into the computer now and it's not coming up on the screen it's so weird and of course i just installed an update before i went live so it's probably that isn't it i wish i hadn't done it now i probably have to restart it but i'm not going to all right, anyway, I'm just going to I'm just going to chat. I have to call this. OK, this was going to be pretty short anyway, but I was meant to show you on the screen how it works as a quick demo. And now I can't do it. But I just want to reiterate that it's not on song. It's Ecamm Live or the computer not sharing the screen. OK, so this is it. And I'll just say again, if you've got an iOS device, this is a this is something that I swear by. So use my link that I pasted at the start of the chat and download it and play around with it yourself. And we'll talk about it on another stream. Let's chat. Cheers, everybody. <laughs> Give me some questions. Let's chat. Let's hang out for a bit. But I just want to make sure you realize it's not on song. It's something else. It's either my cable, Ecamm Live, or the iMac. And you can decide which one it is. So let me, let me just give you a question then. When you perform songs, do you me memorize the lyrics or do you use the words? And what are your thoughts on that? Do you think it's important one way or the other how you do it? Let's talk about performance. 
Eddie says, hey, Eddie, says, I always memorize, always. Now, I agree with that, Eddie. But the thing is, what happens if you do like a wedding in, in to, a wedding tomorrow and they say we want you to learn a certain song? Do you still memorize it or do you then use the lyrics? I find it really hard to memorize a song. I find it can take me a long time, like weeks and weeks and weeks to get the words in my mind. And then I don't tend to forget it. I'm pretty good. But it takes me a long time to memorize a song and I get kind of nervous if I can't memorize it. I get worried about it. So let me know what you think. Oh, here we go. Lee says, I tried to memorize, but age just make you forget more. Lee, I don't know how old you are, but now you're scaring me. So you're saying I'm going to get more forgetful as I get older? And if you're younger than me, I'm really, I mean, it's not really get forgetful, right? <laughs> Thomas Moore says, we have one iPad and four TVs. So what I like about this, like I said, I use it in the bare bones way possible, and I love it. I literally just go to songs, click on some lyrics, so here's a U2 song. And I put it on my, um, it's on my stand, on my mic stand, and I just sing it. So there's U2. And I have it set up so it fills the screen, and I just sing. It's also got the key there, so it's in G, and the beats per minute, and it's in 4-4. Four, four. And if you press the play button down here, or the, sorry, the metronome button, it'll actually give you the tempo. Yeah. Yeah. That can be really useful when you're learning a song or when you, you know, kind of you're really excited to what, just check the tempo or something. That's really, really useful. And you can also have that so it flat the script, whole screen flashes as well. So there's no sound and the screen flashes. You can also do that. So I find little things like that really useful on a gig, uh, both as a practice tool and a performance tool as well. Um, let's see. Let's see what everyone else is saying. The new features, I don't know if it's in there yet or if it's coming real soon, but you can be, no, it's in there now. You can actually beam lyrics. So you show up to a band gig, it's a five piece band, and you put it on the mic stand and you can actually beam those songs to the other devices. Now, I think that's really useful because I did a wedding a couple of years ago and it was a matter of you just call the songs out and we play them. Imagine if on my phone I could have selected a song, for example, uh, Amy, Pre Pure Prairie League. Imagine if I could have selected that song and it also selected it on the other devices as well. Now that would be cool because you haven't got to turn to the band and say, Amy, A major and 88 beats per minute. It's in 4-4. Four, four. One, two, right? You could just choose the song and it comes up on the drummer's iPad, the guitarist, the bass player's iPad, and they know you're doing that song and they know that. And if you put the chords in there, they even know the chords. So stuff like that is really, really useful. Of course, the only downside to that is if you have technical problems like I did tonight, then you're screwed. <laughs> but theoretically, that stuff like that could really make the gig run smoothly, right? And you could also use a foot pedal as well. So you save a set list for that gig and you use a Bluetooth foot pedal to scroll through the songs. Bart says, I use OnSong all the time in my own. Oh, so a lot of people are using this already. It's good to know. My iPad, the phone is too small for me. Yeah, well, this is the Max. This is the biggest phone. And I know what you're saying. For some people, this is too small. And the iPad is obviously easier to read, especially the largest iPad. But I just like this because it's always with me. I've always liked the phone apps more than the iPad apps myself because I always have this. It's always in my pocket. So I get to a gig, I throw it on the mic stand, and I can play. I can also you know, minimize that, check my email, surf the net. Not that I would ever do that. But if there was something I had to research or look up, I could just type it in and use that. So this is like an all-in-one. That's why I've always preferred the phones to the iPads for that reason. But yeah, you can use the iPad as well. And you can also load it up on your computer screen as well. So that's cool. So Mark says, hi, Aaron. Hi, Mark. I have only memorized, but we can all be open to new ideas. Yeah, well, I, I really think that memorizing is really, really important. Memorizing the song and the music is the best thing you can ever do. No one goes to a concert to watch you read lyrics off a, off a notepad or a phone. When you go to watch Paul McCartney, he's not using an iPad, is he? So that's, that's the truth of it. I totally agree. It's not that I don't agree. It's more for practical reasons. Like you get a gig tomorrow, you've got to learn 30 songs. What are you going to do? I just think that looks better than a notepad or something like that. Or if you're doing a regular restaurant, you want to try a few things out. It's just a nice way to, to have that support 
without it becoming like an eyesore. That's how I feel about it. Thomas Moore says, I can remember chords, but not lyrics as well. Yeah, I mean, let's face it, a lot of songs are, are four chords, right? Wagon Wheel, uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's is three chords. A lot of the songs I play are very, are very simple, uh, harmonically, but the lyrics, that's a different story. Because if you're going to sing um, like a Bob Dylan song, some of those songs are like seven verses long. I, c I just couldn't remember it. And then especially if you haven't played a song for a long time, it's even harder, right? Philip Watson says, years ago I had an old-fashioned music stand with a clip light on and full note notebook of all the tunes. I performed during the evening, Stone Age, but it worked. Yeah, Philip, I agree. How are you doing? It does work. It definitely works. And I think it can be done in a, in a, in a smart way. But I've, I've been to so many gigs where they have huge, huge binders with huge lights stuck clamped to the top and a huge music stand. And it's just like you're sitting with a... A table in front of you you know it's like you're blocking the view and surely the point of performance is for them to see the audience to see your expression to see your playing to entertain and to sing the song to the person so i definitely agree with people saying that memorizing is important because i don't feel you can really deliver a lyric if you don't memorize that lyric if you're reading the lyric while you sing it how can you really mean that lyric right so i do feel that but like i said earlier if i've if I want to try a few new songs out, learn a few new things, try some things out, or do something as a request for a wedding or something, and have that support of those lyrics, then I just find this to be a nice compromise where it's there, but it's not blocking. I've got to say, though, ideally, I wouldn't have this either, because this is still, like, you've still got a phone in front of you, right? It's not ideal. Um, memorizing the songs in my opinion is always the best way having said that of course these famous singers like john mayer they do have screens they have them on the floor don't they with their set lists and their lyrics scrolling through just in case they forget they do have these but they're really a backup they're not you know you don't see uh, you don't see john mayer on stage staring at the lyrics on the ground reading like this right he's playing the song he's closing his eyes singing to the audience playing the guitar performing right Lee says, I'd rather buy a new Martin and get a, a C. Oh, AC. Yeah, AC can be expensive. It's like 800 bucks for a good one. But you won't get a Martin for 800 bucks, right? I mean, you probably need AC for, for Martins as well, because you need to get that, that heat, that humidity out of the air. It's so humid right now. If I'm uncomfortable, which I am, then that guitar is uncomfortable as well, right? So you've got to think like that as well. But maybe maybe it's not quite as bad there as it is here. What's the what's the um, what's the temperature there? New York right now is eighty one, and it's humidity forty. I think in Nashville humidity was like sixty five or something some days. Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty bad. Um, but hi, I just recently figured out how to add backing tracks to my on song program. Still experimenting, having a lot of fun. Yeah, it's simple. Um, so there's like a, I say it's simple, now I can't figure it out. I've done it before. There's a place where you click. Oh, don't, don't get demonetized. <laughs> I'll lose my half a penny. So I've done it there. I've Actually, I don't know exactly where you had it. I've forgotten, but I've, I've done it there. I've gone in. Oh, there it is. It's the headphone icon. So I click the headphone icon at the bottom. There's various icons that can be a bit, uh, you know, below what they are. And I've loaded pure, pure Pro League there, and you can see it's all there. So that's that's great. If you're learning a song, you can have it stored there, so when you bring the chords and lyrics up, you can play it and play along to it. It's really good for practicing as well. So yeah, that's nice. And you, yeah, of course, you can store backing tracks there, and then you can use them at a gig. So you, you make a set list, you use a MIDI foot controller to scroll to that song, and then you play the backing track with the MIDI controller and you read the words. I mean, it's great. Some people might say, hey, that's cheating, but I see these things as tools, you know? Thomas Moore, I'd like an easy way to do charts. So what I was going to say today, the one downside to Onsong, not really a downside, but some people have mentioned this on my other videos about it. It doesn't... It, it it loads lyrics. You have to load them in. You don't you don't get on song and then you 
just open up song. You don't just search for Wonderwall and it appears with the chords. It doesn't do that. So all the songs in my on song, I've actually gone online, copied the lyrics from Google, and then pasted them in to the app. But then I like doing that because I then go through and correct any mistakes. Remember on the internet, there's lots of mistakes in lyrics and things. So I go through and do that. I also write out the structure I want as well. Now, when I've saved, when I've done that and saved it, I could then mail it. So I could, I could save these songs and send them to Philip Watson, and he could open them on his on song, and then he could do the same and send me songs. So you can easily build these songs. And I have done some songs where I put the chords in as well. So you can do that, but, but there's another app that I use, which is called Tabs, which is amazing. That has the chords, the lyrics, the tabs, and everything. But I like to use OnSong for the lyric reading. So that's what I do. I use tabs for learning songs. And a lot of tabs now have this official tab as number one. And that is a very accurate tab, I find, or chords as well. So I use that to learn a song. But then once I've learned it, I'll save those lyrics into OnSong because I just find it much more streamlined and better for me when I'm doing a gig. So I hope that makes sense. But I use those two for different reasons. I think one day on song will allow you to actually purchase cover songs in the app and that would be great because they could curate songs and tabs and then let you load it into the app that would be really cool but obviously there's a lot of things to sort out with publishing and rights and licenses and stuff like that so I don't think they've done that yet I've been putting things in manually but it doesn't take long and I do like to put things in manually again because you can check for errors and there's nothing like loading up a song to sing at a gig from Safari and Google, and then you you realize as you're singing it, the lyrics are all wrong. That's why I cut and paste them into OnSong and correct it myself. And I would still do that, even if they offered a service where you can purchase songs, I would still double check them before a gig. I think that's important. Look at this guy, Night Moves. Let's see if I have Night Moves in the app. While, while I'm talking, I'm still trying to make this thing connect. It was working earlier. I don't know. Um, yep, I do. Night Moves, Bob, Bob Seger. I had to learn this for a wedding. So, Night Moves, Bob, Bob Seger is here. There's the lyrics. To get it that size, it doesn't quite fit on one screen. So I've actually done it so I can just, as I'm playing, and I hold a chord, I can just quickly do that. And then read the rest of it. That's how I do it. Of course, a MIDI control pedal or something would look a lot better than that. But that's 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 the workaround that I have. So there you go, Maury. I'll set, take a screenshot of that. <laughs> I expect to see that on the next program. <laughs> All right. Philip Watson, my eighth my What? My eighth button is in transit. <laughs> cheers, Philip. Congratulations. I hear you have a sound hole sniffer mug as well now, so cheers. Philip has purchased the AD15M. AD, what's that stand for? 15 style 15, M is mahogany, D is dreadnought. What's the A? A, D, A, A, A. My mind's gone blank. Let me know. A, D, 15, M, Martin. It's in transit. Expected delivery Monday? Oh, because you're further out. If I, if I order a guitar from Maury's Music, I think I'll get them next day because I'm so close to him. So you're a bit further than me from him. Uh, next one will be an SC-13E. Whoa, I'll be your ninth, Martin. Philip, are you going crazy there? <laughs> That's awesome. My music room is looking awesome. I'm sure. I'm sure. So they're all Martins you've got? Wow. I, um, I've i got my own on a couple of Addy. Addy. I want Addy Martins next, Philip. And also, I want I want an Addy OM. I want an Addy HD. And I think I want an Authentic as well. But I don't know. We'll have to see. Thomas Moore. Nice, Philip. The D15 was my first Martin. I love it. Yeah, that, 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 that range sounds great. I was saying that I played a Whiskey Sunset when I was in Nashville. I think Maury has one in stock. And it sounded incredible. I mean, okay, it didn't sound as good as the Sinker Mahogany Martins at $5,000. But for $1,500, it sounded really impressive. 
and very open and it breathed a lot. I think that the D15 that Phillips, or Phillips ordered is very similar. It's, it's not got the finish, so it breathes really well, very responsive, and a really great sound, like especially, especially uh, if you want something that you that's not like a five grand guitar. It's very hard to beat that stuff. Some of the some of the guitars around that price, I'm a bit like, eh. but those ones are great. So congratulations, Philip. You're gonna like that one. The 59 is great. I own one. I have an SC13E. I really like mine. Yeah, the SC13E is interesting, isn't it? I I played one at NAM finally. It does play great. Pickup, I'm not sure about. You know, it's funny. I was talking to someone today. People love the pickups in the SC13E. They say they sound great, but to me, it's like, yeah, it's uh, I've, I mean. I'm, once you've played things like the Anthem and the Cole Clark, it's hard to impress me, I think. That's the problem. But it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see if they release an SC28E at some point. If they do, I think that would be on my bucket list. More you let me down. I'm not sure I hooked that stuff up. <sighs> I thought he was going to say, should have got an Android phone. <laughs> One more time. It's not the app. It's either I need my new iMac, which I'm still holding out for, or it's Ecamm Live, or it's just the NAM, you know, the, the Nashville bugs out to get me. <laughs> it's showing perfect here in the UK. Huh? Could you see my app? No. Now, now I'm worried, Lee. I might have shown my bank information as well and my social security number. <laughs> Can you use NDI? I don't know how, but I've heard that suggested. You know, I gave up Maury, and now you've got Maury. I gave up, and now you've got me wanting to try stuff to fix this. NDI, NDI, NDI. I used to use that, didn't I? Because I used NDI to show my cats at one time. Mm, I don't have it. I don't have it on here. With Ecamm Live, it's very easy. What you do is you just plug in a cable. It could be this cable is broken. You plug in a cable to the phone, and you can share that phone to the screen. That is how it works. It should be literally that easy. I don't know why today. See, it's not showing up. I'll probably find out it was something really, really obvious later on. Because that's what always happens, right? Something doesn't happen and something doesn't work and it turns out it's really obvious. Maury wants to help from his Mac. Invite me. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Okay. Is he st still there? See, if he's still there, Maury, and you can jump on. Let me see. This is this is a nice impromptu uh, live stream tonight. Da, da, da. Okay, interview is open, Maury. You can join me. We can we can hang out for a bit. Um, but I kind of said what I want to. And like I said, I've got interviews with Onsong that you can check out on my channel. So do that. And the best, actually, I, didn't, I don't need to really sell Onsong. It's a great app. Like, I use it all the time. Use that link I put in the chat and try it for yourself, okay? That's all I need to say about it, really. If you have an iOS device, uh, iPad or iPhone, just download it. It's free to download and try it for yourself. But just bear in mind, you do have to import the lyrics yourself and do it that way, okay? It's not going to magically have all the songs that you sing in it. You're going to have to go to Google, cut and paste them, put it in the app, format it. But once it's there, it's there forever. And you can do a backup to Dropbox or somewhere and save it as a backup. And you've got it forever. Even if you get a new phone, you can open that backup on the new phone and you've got it right there. So, hey, Dan of New Jersey, how you doing? I was just, was just driving through New Jersey the other day. Is your phone and iPad synced with OnSong? Actually, that's a good point, isn't it? You can open OnSong in the web browser. I shall just do that. Mm -hmm. I just don't like to uh, do these things while I'm live because every second while you're live feels like a lifetime <laughs> to the viewer. It's like, I didn't come here to watch you figure this out. I came here to see how you're doing this, right? Um, and it's that whole thing of when I'm trying to figure something out when I'm not live, it's really easy. And when I'm trying to figure something out while I'm live, it's really, really complicated. 
uh, console. That's it, Unsung console. So there's actually, this would be good to show anyway. There's a web-based console um, for Unsung, and that will allow you to use it within the web browser. But that is a premium feature. So you, do, you need to have that. But I do have that. So... Let's go to utilities. <clears throat> Console, here we go. Ah, open in browser, great. With the Wi-Fi on. Let me turn on the Wi-Fi. Okay, I'm gonna show you this on my web browser. But the problem is, is I really want to show the app because the app is what I use. I don't use my web browser when I do this. I'm just I'm just logging in and I'll switch over. Da, da, da. Ah, I'll put the web address. Of course, this may not work either. We'll see. Yeah, cannot connect to the server. Hmm. Open in the browser on the same Wi-Fi network. HTTP. I just feel bad because this is not, um, like I said, this is not uh, the experience you get from this app. It's more to do with my computer tonight. Ah, cannot connect. Don't know why. Okay, can't do that either. But anyway, I'm going to keep going through the comments here. Maury says he likes to memorize, but it's not helpful if a patron requests a song you need to try and apply. Yeah, but that's a problem, Maury, because on song won't load up a song you need to play. You need to go to Google and search for that song. But that's always a disaster for me. Whenever I do that, like I can't find it or an ad pops up or the lyrics are wrong or something's wrong, the chords are wrong. So that's why I try to put all the really great songs that people would ask for in on song just so it's there and I also have the tabs that ready for that reason I find that to be very accurate with a lot of things but even then if I haven't checked the song before the gig it can be a bit iffy you know because you might hit the, a clangor of a wrong chord <laughs> mind you who cares right <laughs> well I care that's the problem um okay so Maury memorizes songs that's good to know and Bart says I do both I like to memorize because the performance feels more original than when reading a chart. Yeah. I like to memorize because the performance feels more original. Yeah, more original and more more natural and more believable, I would say. Philip Watson says memorize also allows me to focus better on my audience. Exactly. That's exactly it, Philip. You want to you want to be able to look at people in the eye, right? Sing to them, interact with them, deliver the lyric to them, and relax and enjoy the performance. If your eyes are glued to the phone for the whole thing and you're really being careful at reading it, you're not going to be performing, you're just reading. I agree with that. Lee has a great way to handle this. I usually forget words, so I just make up new ones as I play. <laughs> that, actually, I knew a drummer used to do that. I said to him, what do you do if you forget lyrics? He was a singer as well. And he said, oh, I just make them up. No one knows. Well, okay. Yeah, it'll work. I guess that'll work, right? Great point, Philip. Yep. Yeah, I think that is really the most important point. But like I said, this is a tool. This is a support. This is not a replacement for memorizing words. No one should use these things as a replacement for memorizing words. This is a backup. This is a tool. Definitely. Yeah, pros have teleprompters on the floor, look like monitors. They do, Thomas, but they don't stand there and read them, right? So, same with this app. They're there as a backup. They're there as a guide. They're not there to to use. They don't stand, like Rod Stewart doesn't stand there and sing like, Wake up, Maggie, I think I've got... All right. <laughs> Most of Paul Puck McCartney's <clears throat> audience know his songs better than him. That's right, less pressure, Philip, because... They're singing along anyway. She was just... And they're all singing. They're singing the whole time. So he knows... Yeah, good point. Okay, that was a bad example, Paul McCartney. I mean, like, Ed Sheeran or some pop... Like, Shawn Mendes. I don't know. I think the only ones in the audience that care are musicians. Most are there to drink, etc. And could care less. 
Well, Thomas, that's the age-old question, right? They don't, they don't care what guitar you're playing. They don't care what pickup you're using. They don't care what microphone you're using. They don't care what song you're singing. They don't care at all. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's like that's the thing people say on in, on the internet that, that makes me laugh because I always say this. For me, it's not about the audience; it's about me. Right? I want to feel relaxed. I want to have good sound. I want to know I'm not going to forget a song. I want to be able to try a new song, and that's why I have this. Remember, I said earlier though, this app was originally made for the worship community, where you show up on a Sunday. And you just have to play a song and you haven't had time during the week to memorize that song and you're with new players that week. That's why this app was originally created and that totally makes sense. All those gigs you get where they just throw you together one night and you have to just play. That totally makes sense. I'm not talking about like a, an experienced established act that is playing music all the time. No. That's, I think that's different. AC in the UK would cost me three grand? No. 64% humidity in England. That's nuts. So I hope you're dehumidifying those guitars. Takes a while to get a song correct. You can use Cordy and import them in and they are close. Yeah, I have never tried Cordy. But whatever I use, whatever I do, I would always, 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 always check them. I like to load them in and check them myself. Because so many times I find mistakes, and I'm not being funny, that they, they just are. Or I want to add something, I want to add a note, I want to add a, 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 like the chorus and verse one, and I want to format it my own way, you know? So that's why I always do it myself, I always check them, for that reason. That won't help my voice. Oh, the D15M, right. So Dreadnought uh, 15 series mahogany. All mahogany, mahogany all over. Nice. Oh, Philip does have a Larivee. Larive. I played the Tommy Emmanuel Larivee in Nashville. That's a nice guitar. They're really cool guitars, aren't they? Especially for the price. They're a bit, they're a bit more affordable. They're good. D15 mahogany. That's what I thought. There was an... Oh, you, you meant A D15 mahogany. That makes sense. I was pulling your leg. Oh, really? That makes a change. What were you What were you joking about, Lee? The fact that it cost three thousand pounds for AC, or it was eighty three Fahrenheit and sixty four percent humidity. Which one's the joke? <laughs> oh, Maury, you wouldn't jump on the stream with me. My camera is packed away. Come on. No, it's fine. Like I said, the best thing you can do to try with this app is just to download it and try it out. And then let me know in the future if you like it. Yes, to use it is cool, but it takes a while to learn. Actually, there are great tutorials online how to properly use the program. Yes, there are. There's two because because some of the advanced features on that I don't even use on here that are fantastic are things like full MIDI control. So you can actually load a song and it loads that MIDI patch on your lights and your Line 6 Helix or something. It's actually got so much baked in there, it's insane. They told me they even added streaming capabilities to the software when we had the lockdown. So you can stream from the app as well. I probably wouldn't do that. I probably use dedicated software, but you can stream from the app. You can control other gear from the app. It's not just a lyric reader. I think my point this evening was to say, I use it. I find great value in it just as a lyric reader and nothing else. But on top of that, it does so much more. So much, so much more. It syncs with other, syncs with other players. It has full MIDI foot control. You can change songs from, from a, a wireless MIDI controller on the floor. You can control other MIDI gear from it. You can set hot corners on the screen. So if you tap the top left screen, it does something. If you, so like a, basically a full MIDI controller. And, uh, and a lot more than that too. Load the backing tracks, give you a tempo, a BPM. It does so much. It's, a re it's probably one of my favorite apps as a musician. I have used it so much and it's great. And it's also stable. Because there's nothing worse than playing a gig and your lyric act crashes on you. Because then what are you going to do, right? I don't think that's ever happened in years, which is cool. But yes, there are a lot of really good tutorials on it on on the, on the, on YouTube. I think, oh, it also will send BPMs as well. So if you use a drum machine, it could choose the beat and tell it the tempo. It's, it's really powerful. Or it can be really powerful. Ensemble becomes a crutch, even when you know the song well. Now, I do agree with that, Thomas. I do agree with that. 
After a few years of using it, I definitely got dependent on it. Because what I would do is, rather than use it to load up a new song, I would use it for every song. So I would, I would load up a song I've sang for years and use it. And I then found when I didn't use it, I struggled. So that is a really good point. And that is the downside of these things. You can get dependent upon them, and that's not good. Read, ah, Pooh. Reading, now, Pooh Ninja, I went to Carter Vintage in Nashville, and they had those uh, those Fender heads, like the one you made. I can't, they weren't they weren't twins, but they were the the other the other ones. Like I thought of you. Reading the lyrics is sad but funny. Okay, well that's that's just, I don't know what that means. <laughs> Dad of New Jersey, they totally don't care unless you sound bad. Yeah, someone needs to tell me that about guitars. No one cares about guitar. That all they care about, he said, is if it sounds good or bad. That's it. Oh, joking about seeing the app on the screen. I got me worried there because I thought I'd load up my, my chase or something. <laughs> Hi, professional procrastinator. Here we go. I've been using on song for years. You can even use it to project lyrics and control lighting as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we were saying. So you can put lyrics on the screen. You can use it for karaoke nights. You can have it run your lights. So when you change the song, it changes the light. Imagine that. You play Lady in Red and it changes the lights to red. And then you play... Uh, tangled up in blue and it changes the lights to blue. Oh, see, I'm not, I, I need to get more involved in this stuff. Hi, Michael. Good to see you. Sorry I'm joining late today. No one song on Android, but I use Music Notes Plus, which is lar largely similar, including MIDI in out. So that's great to know, Michael. Thank you for sharing that. I am not an Android user. I never have been. And I don't, I'm not saying that in a weird kind of way. Some people are very like, I use Apple. I don't use that. I'm not like that at all. I just, I use Apple, right? That's, that's So it's very good for me to have you here to tell us that. So if you use Android, check out Music Notes Plus. It also has the MIDI IO as well. Okay. A lot of people give companies a hard time for only doing apps for, I, for iPhone and iOS. I don't think that's really fair because at the end of the day, it's hard to program for two platforms, especially when you're baking in the kind of features that OnSong are doing. I mean, they haven't even moved over to the cloud yet. When they made OnSong originally, they, there was no I, iCloud. They now have to remake the app for iCloud, which they're doing at the moment. But imagine doing that and also supporting Android. The danger then is they'll spread themselves thin and you'll get a subpar product. So. I may be, I may be being defensive here, but you know I don't know if I don't know. It's just my opinion. I can see a reason why companies focus on one platform. Maybe they're just simply not big enough to do both. At the same time, yes, it sucks if you if you don't have an iPad, right? And you can't use it. It's a bit like, for example, the uh, was it the Voice Print DI? Right now, it's for iOS. It's not for Android. I, I get it. I get it. it. That stuff does happen and is annoying. But there, yeah, there are other apps for Android, so do check that one out. Thank you for sharing that with us. That's really cool. Um, and good to see you. Thomas Moore says, my friend got those in-ears in your link and likes them a lot. So, Thomas, that's probably going to be next week's show. So I've been using these. I've been using these since the lockdown, and I've really come to love them. These are about 50 bucks on Amazon, and they're out of this world fantastic. But when I was at the NAMM show, as we discussed on Monday... I actually decided to get the custom U, uh, was it UE in-ears, ultimate ears. And what they did was they had the discount. That's why I did it. I got the pretty premium ones. And I thought, I thought, right, I'm doing this once. I don't want to do this again. I'm going to get the ones that I really, really want. So they did the scans. So I got to see my ear canal. I wish I'd taken a picture. I got to see the scans of my ear. And... They did all that, and then the, I chose what I wanted. Mine have got the ports here, so you can actually pull a little piece out, and it allows some bleed. So if you're singing, you can get... What happens within is, is you can feel like you're in a bubble. So you can actually pull this out, and you get a bit of room bleed, and that's really good if you're a singer, because when you sing within ears, often that makes you sing out of tune. Just ask Maury. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Quick, quick, hang on, hang on, hang on. That was a joke. Ask me, right? If you sing within ears, you, it can kind of throw off your pitch. It's a very common problem that people have. So what you do is you pull this little piece out, and it allows some room um, ambient noise to come through. So that's cool. And then you just put a piece back in again, and it's like nothing was ever changed. So maybe next week, if they arrive on time, I'll do a live like unboxing comparison of these 
the, I mean, this is a big price difference. $50 versus, it's like 10 times the price, right? So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to try them. And I'll give you an honest opinion because I was looking for this honest opinion for a long time. Hang on. I'll get you dinner in a minute. Cats are going crazy. Um, I was thinking for months, like, like I've got the Martin, I've got the, the Neumann mic, I've got, and I'm listening through a pair of $50 headphones. I'm like, what am I doing? But then I kept thinking to myself, they sound, these sound so good. Like, why would I spend more money? But I just feel like it's criminal to have good gear and listen to it through $50 headphones. The question is, have I wasted my money? So tune in next week to find out because I'm going to talk about it and I'm going to be very honest about it because I paid for these myself. So I'll let you know. But if you're new to the world of in-ears, before you go out and spend the money on the customs, I highly recommend you get these ones and I'll link them below and I'll put them below in the, in the, in the description later on tonight. So you should get these. It's a great way to start out and, and learn if you like in-ears. And then if you like in-ears and if my review comes out positively, then you can go out and invest in the premium ones like I did. But I'll let you know. It's going to be a... It's, that's going to be a, uh, I don't want to say an expensive mistake if I'm wrong, but <laughs> I guess it will be. No, whatever, whatever they do, whatever they're like, they'll be great, I'm sure. And they'll be very comfortable because these are just using the foams. But will the sound quality be worth that much of an upcharge? Well, I'll let you know next week. But I'm glad they got them and I'm glad they used my link. So thank you. I get the affiliate for that. On song do a live Facebook stream with Q and A. They have a very responsive customer service team. They do. They're great. That's why they're a great company. You know, they're, they're, I've, I've, they're always nice to me. They put me in their newsletter. They've offered me this um, affiliate link now. They're very supportive of the, the users and their people like me that promote them. Like I said, I don't. I never want to do videos about stuff I don't use myself. These Thursday nights are especially about, especially right now in the beginning, stuff that I use all the time and I really believe in. And this app is, I mean, I don't know how I'd have done a lot of my shows without this app because it's just been there all the time. It's amazing. Um, and yes, they do a Q&A live. So you can email them. They're very helpful. And they do these live streams like this, where they talk through different features and updates, and you can ask them questions as well. They're really cool. They're working hard, and I, I do admire that. Michael Hardiman says, Mobile Sheets Pro. Is, what's that? is that an Android app? I'm not sure what that is. Oh, Thomas Moore. What app is there to do Nashville type charts? I've been doing them in paper or writing out tabs. That's a great question, and I have no idea. Because I'm just typing the chords. Like, I'll just show you. I did some original songs for Unsung. They gave them away in one of their newsletters. So you go to books. I've got a collection here called Original. It's just my original songs. So you can see here, you can put the chords in above. Uh, my light's in the way. So I just did that, right? Now, Nashville type, I don't know. I don't, I don't use that system. Maybe I should use that system. When you download these tab apps and uh, chord apps and things, they always just use that. They don't use, they don't really use Nashville system, do they? Maybe like, um, what's it called? The Real Book? Do they use it in that one? Uh, something, something, something worth checking out. If you find one, let me know. Nashville type chart. So, so what that is, if you don't know what that is, is rather than what I've done there, put D A G, because it's in D, it's in the key of D, and the chords are D A G. They would just put one five four. And then what you do is you say, hey, this song's in D. So one in D is D, five in D is A, and four in D is G. That way, if you said, I want to do this song in F, and it's and, and on, the, on the chart it says one, five, four, you know that one is F, five is C, and four is B flat. Now, obviously, that involves knowing some a little bit of music theory, but it's a very efficient way of doing many songs in many different keys. Um, so that is interesting. Pooh Ninja, I had it happen to a friend. His tablet crashed mid-song. The second singer st started Chain of Falls with the crowd till it had enough charge to continue. Sad and f oh, okay. Yeah, that's the problem with technology. If like if your phone isn't charged and it dies and you rely on that, or if you leave it at home and you rely on that phone for a gig, you can't play the gig. That's why none of this stuff should ever be a replacement for memory. These are just backup tools. That's all they are.
Uh-huh. Oh. I have the UE7 Pro I Oh great. No complaints, although I'm on my second cable. Yes, so I was thinking about that. So these 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 ones have these okay, let me just show you this. These ones have the foam. What happens to this foam is it breaks over time. And that's really annoying. And also this loses connection for me sometimes as well. And then sometimes I run over the cable because I use an extension cable into them. And sometimes I run that over once I did break it. So I'm worried about that. But they said there's some kind of warranty where if you break them, you can pay a hundred bucks for the next several years and get a new pair. So I will plug it. I'll just be careful not to run over them. That's what I'm going to do. But I'm glad you've got those as well. That's a UE7 Pro. I'm going to see what they are. Ultimate Ears UE7 Pro. So, ah. Yes, I tried those. I like those. They also had, let me just see what the different ones are. Because they also had, they had one which is for like studio. Um, like recording. I wanted that because they're very flat. And I thought flat would be really, really cool for what I'm doing. And then they had they had this pair that was one up that had basically had more drivers in them. So I ended up getting them because I they let me listen to them. They had like disposable tips, and they let me listen to them. And um, I just thought these ones sounded more alive. I didn't want the ones that had more kind of bass and low end. Oh, I'll just show you here on the screen. I didn't want to show. I didn't want to get the ones with more bass and low end, because I figured that I didn't want it to affect my mixing, like for a gig or for a live stream. But then I wanted the ones that sounded good because I want to feel inspired while I'm playing. So let me just share my screen and I'll show you what I got. Uh, this one here. How do I do this? This one there. And I just saw this get 400 bucks off. So maybe I didn't get much of a deal at all. Let's see what this is. Sign below and claim your offer and receive exclusive promotions. Uh, I mean, I got about 300 off and I got the ear scanning, which is normally 100. So maybe it probably works out the same. But I haven't got to go somewhere to have my ears scanned. But this is what I wanted to read. So they had the five. So there's two drivers. And the more drivers, obviously, well, some people say it's better, some people say it's not, but we have here the 5 Pro, which is balanced sound for any application. You can see that's like a picture of the frequencies. The 6 Pro, three drivers, they sounded good. I think I tried those. See, enhanced low end, I didn't want that. I feel like that's good for a bass player. I wanted something very flat. So I went and tried these 7 Pro, which they said were good for guitarists, and a slight mid bump because that's good for hearing the guitar. So I thought these would be the best for me. These reference remastered because they're very flat. Look how flat they are. Okay, so I thought it'd be great for mixing songs and live streaming because if I set the sound on them, it'll be very flat when it goes out to you guys. Uh, but I actually went for, I think I went for the 18 plus. Yeah. So they're not quite as flat. Actually, I didn't realize that. They have a slight bump on the high end. And Maury will, Maury will say I like that because I like high end. <laughs> but anyway, they did. They just had more of a kind of vibe to the sound. They just sounded very alive. And it also felt louder. And if you look at this picture, it does show they're louder. So maybe they are actually louder. They just felt a bit louder. And they told me they're not louder at, at, the, at the booth, but they felt a bit louder. It just felt very very rich and harmonic and I really like that. So what I need to do is set up my sound with them and then listen back on some other headphones and speakers to make sure that I, I know what sound they're generating to me. But I really like them. It says the extra headroom and dynamic range. And that's six drivers. And then there's the UE Live eight drivers, uh, which again, look, you've got like a slight mid cut there. And I'm sure they're great, but they were really expensive, like really, really, really expensive. So actually, let me see here. Input sensitivity, 119 dB. Oh, that was here. Reference remaster, 119 dB. 18 plus pro, 100 dB. Hmm. That doesn't make sense to me because they sounded louder than me. Maybe I'm wrong. Da, 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 da. Uh, 
Isn't that what that means, the input sensitivity, like the volume of them? No, it can't be, because that says one, two, four there. That would be really different. And they, they all seem about the same. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just know that with the 18+, plus, I just liked the... I played some of my music and streams through it. I just liked the feel of it. I just... I just it's, it's very difficult, because you want, you want something flat, like when you're mixing an album, when you're live streaming and mixing, but you also want something that when you play with them, you get a really cool kind of... You get into the music, you know? So, well, we'll see. We shall see. I'm sure the ohms and everything affects the, the levels too, stuff like that. So we'll see. I will compare them to these. I feel like it's totally unfair to compare custom in-ears at that price with these from Amazon. But I'll compare them and hey, you know, we'll see what happens. This is interesting too. They should have had this at the show. Look at this. You can do this on the site. What do you plan on using your ultimate ears for? Mm, stage and studio. I guess you can use it for your iPhone as well with an adapter. What's a perfect model for each performer engineer? Which des What describes you? So I presume if you say like bass player, they'll recommend the ones with the extended low end, right? I told them, let's see if they were accurate with what they told me. I told them I'm a guitar player, a singer, and a composer. But let's put singer and vocalist. Oh. So this isn't working. Well, obviously, there's something in the air today because this isn't working either. <laughs> and you can put your email. I'll get spam. I don't think it even worked there, did it? It didn't show up. Yay! Isn't that the one that I got? Oh, yes. So I didn't pay that much. I think I got about 400 bucks off. There's still a lot of money to spend, right? I didn't do the switch either. I did add the ambient feature. It was 50 bucks more. Does it show a picture of that? No. And I did get the clear ones like this. I want to say, please don't come and steal them from me. But you can't steal them from me because these are going to be completely custom to my ear. There's no, there's no tips on these. So these will only fit me. These will not fit anyone else. So... Ah, here we go. Do you have your ear measurements? I'm sending my... So you've got to get your impressions done. Or if they, have, if they have them on file, you can order them. Yeah. You know, this is the first time I've done this. I'm really excited to try it. Uh, I don't know what to expect. I really hope I find them inspiring and worth the money. But I'll let you know. And then hopefully people watching my channel will be able to make a decision. Is it worth doing something like this? There's also other brands that do this as well. But we'll see. We'll see. It's a bit of a gamble, but isn't most of this stuff. <laughs> okay. So... PP's got the, that's Professional Procrastinator's got the the UE7 Pros, yeah. Oh, really? Onsong lets you use Nashville number system instead of chords. I didn't know that because I never used Nashville number system. That's cool. Thanks for sharing that. So there you go. Who asked that? It was Thomas Moore, right? So you can, you can do it in the app. Which totally makes sense because so many Nashville players, I say Nashville, not, you haven't got to be in Nashville to use the app but or to use that system, but... So many players must use that for convenience, like I said. You mentioned your cat, so i got to mention mine. I have one named Addy and one named Martin. You can guess what they're named after. So, Mark, are you an Adirondack fan? Because I'm looking at getting one right now. I want to get an Addy Martin. I tried some in Nashville, and they just said they had so much headroom and power. I loved it. Loved that. You know, for the heavy strumming I do, it was so cool. Yeah, no, ours are Harry and Lily. But uh, if I get more cats, we'll call them uh, Addy, Martin, Cole, and Clark, <laughs> and Gibson. <laughs> Introduce your cats. They're on the video for the unboxing of the Gibson J150 Noel Gallagher, Lee. Go check that out. I'd like to not use the numbers, but do it in measures. I use a format for measures. Okay. Yeah, it's very flexible. Cleaning wax out of the UE7 is always... Oh, my God. I guess so, right? Because they're tubes that go straight in your ear. The wax is going to go inside the tube. I hadn't thought of that. Well, thanks for taking all the um, all the uh, fun out of my, my new purchase, Professional Procrastinator. <laughs> the best thing about custom IEM, as in your monitors, is comfort and isolation. You get exactly what you want and nothing more, even with the ambient port. Do you have the ambient port on yours? I wasn't sure about that. I, I, just, I, I didn't want to like not get it and then regret it later on. That's why I got it. They still cut most of everything around. 
yeah, when you think about it, these are just like shoved in the ear and the foam expands and they kind of fit. These custom ones will just glide and sit right in your ear. Like there's, it should be the perfect seal. It should be excellent. That alone should make a huge difference, right? And then the quality of the drivers and everything should be even better, I hope. That's what I hope anyway. You can't have a conversation with them in. I guess you can with the ambient port though, right? So, I don't know. I was going to, the thing in here is, I was going to say, will it block out my cats? The thing in here is, you're, you're, I'm hearing myself through the microphone. When you're on, and so I hear the cats and ambient noise in the room anyway. When you're on stage with a band and using in-ears, you might not have that. So you won't hear anything. And that's where some musicians can really struggle. But I think it's for that reason, some musicians actually set up an ambient mic in the, in the, on the stage so they can hear that and they bleed it back through the mixer so they can hear themselves on stage like the, the ambient noise. It's interesting. Actually, my Voice Live 3 Extreme has that feature. It's got little mics built into the pedal and it will allow you to bleed that back into your in-ear monitors. Pretty impressive. Yes, a fan of Addy. So you recommend that, Mark? Would you choose Addy over Sitka? I'm looking at getting one. I, I, I tried one in, in uh, Nashville and it really blew. I was like, wow, I can just strum on this thing so heavy it doesn't give up and it's got this big, bright sound. I really liked it a lot. Thomas Moore has an Addy Quilted Mahogany Dread, D18CW, which is awesome. So I was when I was there, I was talking to, I won't say who it was, just in case they don't like it, but I was talking to a, a, a rather famous Martin dealer, shall we say, and they said to me, I didn't say he or she, did I? They said to me, I don't like, or I'm not a fan of VTS. And that's interesting to me because I have not liked, I've not loved the VTS guitars that I've played either. I have with some, like I, I want that authentic and that's VTS, but I found that interesting. Also, they said that East Indian Rosewood doesn't look as like some of the other Rosewoods look more like Brazilian, which is cool, but they, they're actually a fan of East Indian Rosewood. And I thought, yeah, I always like that. East Indian Rosewood as well. And then I played the Addy Top guitar and I was just like, this is great because it's got that volume and that headroom and that cut that I always look for. So I was thinking, oh, why, why don't all the standard guitars come with Addy Tops as standard? I guess it is an upcharge, right? And there's less of it now. But I think they're great. And then I went looking at vintage Martins with, with Brazilian Rosewood back and sides and Addy Tops <laughs> and real VTS because they've actually aged themselves. But those guitars were $32,000. That's not going to happen. Um, are you going to do a show on the Voice Live 3? I already have done. I did one. I think the first show I did on this Thursday night was the Voice Live 3. So go back and check that out. That's such a great pedal. I use it all the time. And that actually has a, a headphone input that will allow you to send a monitor mix to your in-ear monitors. And like I said, you can also bleed microphones from the pedal back into the in-ears as well. It's really cool. I would recommend I phone personally, I can hammer chords and notes. Yeah, I just, I think the one that I want to get the OM and the Dread, but the Dread I played was just like, it was, it's, if that wasn't a sunburst, I would have bought it. It was so incredible. It was, I was just like, thwack, and it had this low end, this amazing punch to the low end. And as I laid into it, it just didn't give up. It just kept going. I was like, this is great. So cool. So lately I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking about getting maybe an OM with an Addy top, like a standard one. And then I, I, I really want to get an authentic, but I don't know. They're a lot of money, aren't they? And they got the, the, what, the big necks on them, the VTS. I don't know. I wish Martin had more standard guitars that were basically, do you remember the marquee? Like the marquee guitars had East Indian Rosewood, no VTS and Adirondack top. And they had all the kind of vintage stuff in them. But they, they, they had the V-neck. If, if they made them, I really believe if they made the marquee with the kind of modern necks, that'd be killer. Absolutely killer. I would love that. But hey, what do I know? Um, yeah, that's it. So, apologies for the technical difficulties this evening. But I don't really need to show the app because it's a free download anyway. So use my link in the chat or the description below this video. If you've got iOS, download OnSong if you need chord charts, especially lyrics, and try it out. Remember, don't expect it to have all those songs in there. F 
find the lyrics on Safari, drop them in, check them, save it, label it, find the format that works for you, and try it at your next gig or open mic and see what you think of it. You know, get a good holder for it. Some of those iPhone holders are pretty, pretty bad. I don't like them, but the one I have is great. They don't make it anymore. But see if you can find something decent. You don't want a big like arm on there. You want just a small holder, clips on, holds it sturdy. And just try it or put it on the desk to start with. Just try it out. See what you think. I think I think what we discussed tonight is exactly how I feel about it. Yes, it's cheating a bit. Yes, it's not the ideal thing to do when you're performing. But if you're the kind of musician that's playing every night and you wanted to slowly add songs in and try a few things, or if you do weddings and you need to have lyrics in front of you, it's a clean way to do it rather than having pieces of paper everywhere and stuff like that. That's how I feel about it. What's your thought? So Modern Deluxe is interesting. I wanted to like it, and I haven't played them all. I reviewed that D18 for Maury, and I, actually I like that one quite a lot. But I did when they first came out, I ordered the D28, and I, and, um, I didn't keep it. I think it had, that, that, had, that wasn't from Maury, it was from somewhere else, and it had a problem with the truss rod. So I, I just sent it back. I didn't want to deal with that stuff. So I sent it back. That was like the very first one they ever shipped. Um, the next, are, I don't know about the necks. The necks are kind of really thin, aren't they? And kind of weird. They're kind of. Yeah, I, I like thin necks, but I think I've I've played the I've played these necks on the standard series for so many years that that's just my that's my go-to now. I love those necks. They just they just fit me perfectly, I'm, and I'm used to them. But that and the John Mayer neck I really like. So the Mon Deluxe neck puts me off a bit. The VTS puts me off a bit, and. But the thing is, I love the Evo fret. I love the idea of the Evo frets or stainless steel frets. So I want to like it. I also love the Aura HD and the pickups they have on those. I want to love those guitars. They seem, when they announced the Modern Deluxe, I was thinking this is completely up my alley. A real traditional Martin with modern appointments like the, the carbon fiber plate and the gold uh, frets and the Evo fret. I thought this is it. This is my dream Martin. But I find them a bit, I can't really get my, my head around those guitars because they're a bit, for me, they don't quite sit right. I, I want either a really vintage Martin, but with a neck that's playable, like just real vintage. I mean, I would love just an original 1942 Martin. I would love that. Just the real thing. I think that's, when I talk about the history of Martin, I, I want the real deal. That's what I want. Or I want modern, but not too modern. Like this, this would... This with the colorway and the sick guitar. This is a great guitar, by the way. This, they shouldn't have discontinued these. A guitar for stage, this is amazing, right? This is a great all-round guitar, the colorway HDC, which is basically a standard series. But I really think it's cool when you do one of those with the Addy Top, maybe some of the other appointments as well. Yeah, I don't know. So for me, the Modern Deluxe kind of sits in a kind of weird place for me. Because it, it's modern deluxe, right? It's, it's like modern and old. It's it, it's not one or the other. Don't get me wrong; they're great guitars. And like I said, I would kill for those Evo frets in my regular playing guitar because I, I go through frets pretty quickly. But I've only played the D and the and the D18 and the D28. I haven't played the OM. I haven't played the others. Yeah, I haven't really bonded with them. I don't know why. I need. I'm 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 kind of undecided. I want to try some more. I did like the D18. But I think where I think where I'm at, I either want a standard series with a few appointments like the Addy Top, and kind of customized like that, or I just want I, I kind of want the real thing. Has anyone here ever bought just a real old Martin? Is that is that a terrible idea to do that? <laughs> I I mean, if let's say for a second you could afford one, right? Let's say you found a Martin for eight grand, and you sold all your Martins and bought that vintage Martin. Is that a terrible idea? I don't know. There's a lot of there's a lot of negatives that come with buying a vintage guitar as well, right? Aside from the price, for sure. So I'm not sure. I think the I think the Mon Deluxe will be ideal for some players, but again, they don't have the Addy Tops, and I like that. Remember, they did the Marquees. I like the specs of the Marquee, but with a with the, with the modern neck from this guitar, I think they should do that. And I wonder if those Mon Deluxes will even stay around, because the Marquee was only around for a while, right? So is the Mon Deluxe like the new Marquee, and they'll change it again? Is it like Fender, where every three years they keep changing things up? Essentially the same guitar, but they keep 
um, changing things, switching things up, so you have to get the new one. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows the plans? The truth is, I don't really know what I want. There's so many things about a, a Martin. Like you start to think, right, I want an OM or a Dread, and I want Addy, and I want I want East Indian Rosewood. <coughs> Excuse me, and I want stainless steel frets, or I want Evo frets, and I want um, Grover tuners, and I want. This. So you, you slowly start to realize what you really want, but then you also realize those guitars don't really exist, and you have to do like a custom order. So that's when you have to call up Maury and say, right, I want to order this custom. But the problem with that is you've then got to wait for it, and by the time it arrives, maybe you've changed your mind again, right? I think it's it's. Is for me that's kind of where I'm at, so that's why I'm trying to stick with what I know I like over the years. I know I like the standard series, and I always talk about that and annoy people. But I do like the standard series. I just want a standard series with a bit more vintage appointment to it. So nothing like VTS or maybe not even Evo fret, but maybe like the Addy top and maybe um, certain bracing or maybe a long saddle. I don't think I'd put a pickup in a guitar like that. I think I'd keep it acoustic. So, yeah. It's a fun journey, isn't it? How about the Aaron Short Custom Deluxe? Well, I was actually going to speak to Maury about this, Mark, because Spoon had a, a custom shop guitar with Maury that was really cool. That was Addy Top. That was Cutaway. That was a that was a cool kind of modern vintage guitar. So I was going to say um, it's time to do the Aaron Short version of that and bring back the Spoon one as well and get some of Maury's guitars done as well. And maybe they'll be the biggest sellers. I'm just kidding. But I think, I mean, at the end of the day, that's why I do this channel, isn't it? Because I'm, 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 I'm always thinking about this stuff. I'm always trying this stuff. But I did find it quite frustrating in Nashville because you, you go out thinking, right, I want to get, like, my ideal Martin, right? And you go out, and it's very hard to find because if you're looking at vintage, they've only got what they've got. If you're looking at a modern guitar, they've only got what they've got, especially with the shortages right now. It's hard to... It's hard to find something. I think the, the ultimate solution is probably a custom shop. But I think you've got to be you've got to be really brave to order a custom shop because you've got to wait for it and you've got to like that particular guitar. The reason I like the authentic at the NAM show is I pulled it down, I played it, and I just love I was just like, this is great. And I didn't care that it was VTS. I didn't care about the next show. I didn't care about any of that stuff. All I cared about was that connection I had from it. And I realized that that is a nice thing, that connection you, when you just grab a guitar and play it and, and just connect with it, that's a great thing. And that's something you don't really get online, isn't it? It's a bit like saying when you play a gig online, it's not like playing a gig in person. It's the same thing. But how practical is it to actually do that? Not very practical at all, because you might fly around the world trying guitars, right? So I'm still kind of figuring out what I like, but I will say this. I know I changed my mind a lot. The Addy Top guitars I played last week were fantastic. And also, I played a Sinker Mahogany guitar. And the whole thing was Sinker Mahogany. So that wood is really old. It's like buying a vintage Martin, because the mahogany is that old. And the whole guitar was made, the entire thing was made of Sinker Mahogany. That sounded great too. But when I played it with the Addy, against the Addy, Rosewood guitar, I preferred that, because I just like that sound. And that thing just... I mean, some people might have found that a bit too bright. I think Addy is very bright to start with, and it kind of breaks in over a long period of time. But I think, for me, that just sounded like a... It was just big and bold and brash, and I, I like that. Lee wants a 00042 slot head Addy top Cogabolo. So, 00042, yeah. Long scale, short scale, I'm undecided. I like the long scale for the extra power. The 42 design, I like. The slot head, I'm not really a fan of slot head. It looks very vintage, but I don't find it very practical to restring. Addy top, totally Addy, yeah. Koga Bolo, my thoughts on those woods are they look pretty, they look nice, they can look nice, but I think the East Indian Rosewood is hard to beat. And some people tell me the East Indian Rosewood is closer to the Brazilian than the than the Koga Bolos and those woods. They just look very nice, right? They look cool. Did you try Sinker? Yes, I did. I tried Sinker Mahogany. I tried the Sinker Mahogany, I think it was at Groon's. He's got a bunch of those. And I got to chat with him for the first time. And uh, it's great. It's great. Because he, you know, he showed me a vintage. And then he said, here's the Sinker. And the Mahogany in this Sinker is the same age as that vintage. So whereas the Sinker Mahogany is four grand, the vintage is 40 grand. What are you going to do? Yeah, it's a good point. 
I'm just not a huge mahogany fan. I prefer rosewood, so I, I don't think I would get one. I was tempted to because sink of mahogany obviously will will probably run out at some point. So I was thinking, yeah, I should probably think about it. And it had the Addy top. So that's a bit like the Outlaw. The Outlaw guitar is a guitar that I played at Maury's when I first met him. And I love that guitar. That was a great sounding guitar. So maybe I should have got the sink of mahogany, but not really what I'm looking for. I'm really looking for... Think about, think, I'm thinking about, I'm getting way too chatty tonight. I'm thinking about selling a few Martins, getting the HD28 with an Addy top, getting an OM with an Addy top, and getting an authentic. There, don't tell anyone I said that. That's just between me and you, okay? And that's subject to change. <laughs> this stuff is fun, isn't it? Dangerous, but fun. A sinker M size. Yes, there you go. That's a custom order. Lee says, Coco Bolo produces more bass. Mm, does it? Well, I was told that East Indian Rosewood is more similar in sound to Brazilian Rosewood than the others. And the others just look nice. So I won't tell you who told me that, but make of that what you will. We, we, we can discuss that in the future with Spoon. Since I've been talking a lot about vintage guitars lately, I've been talking to Spoon about maybe doing a mini series on Martin vintage guitars, maybe a three part series. Part one, we discuss vintage guitars on a live stream. Part two, we go out and play a bunch of vintage guitars in this, in the New York City. And part three, we discuss our feelings on vintage guitars. Because I've suddenly got this huge, like after playing the authentic and playing a bunch of vintage guitars in Nashville, I've suddenly got this thing about vintage Martins, which I never had before. I'm suddenly like, oh, that's the thing. That's what I need. That's the thing. So I, I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to buy one. That'd be crazy. But actually look into them some more and document. I'm, I'm, we might do that. No one knows about that. That's an exclusive. I'm, I'm hiding that from Maury. So don't tell him I told you. Okay. This is just between me and you tonight. Don't tell anyone. This is a private conversation. <laughs> You're guessing bad. Well, Thomas Moore, you try going to Nashville to the NAM show where they have every standard series Martin and the authentics and then going to the stores there Carter vintage guitar and Groon guitar and playing those guitar you you try that and then don't get gas for for, for guitars you try that but that was spoon no it wasn't spoon it was someone in nashville yeah you 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 try that and tell me um tell me that i'm, I'm going to show you the guitar i'm going to put a video about this online soon but i'm going to show you the guitar that I'm talking about, this, this vintage guitar. $32,000, right? Look, look at this. You want a dream tonight, Lee? I'll show you this picture. <laughs> okay. Look at this guitar, right? 1942. Now, here's, here's the only problem I have with it. The frets, I think the frets are new. The bridge is new. It's a replica. There's a plate reinforcement underneath the top where the plate where the plate uh, the plate is where the string where the pins go through, and the top is refinished. So my only problem at this point is well the guitar is not really it's not all original and it's thirty two thousand and then they tell you well yeah but if that was all original closet kept in someone's closet it would be sixty thousand eighty thousand dollars. You're like okay well at that point I get it. But look at the condition. The condition of that thing is off the charts. And it sounded great. And it had that thin neck. Actually, reminded me of the modern deluxe neck a little bit, but a bit fatter. So that, this is what got me thinking. Like, why are those necks different? Why are some necks V? Why are some thin? Why are some fat? Why this? Why that? And that's why I wanted to do research into the vintage guitars, the actual vintage guitars. I find them really fascinating. And look at the, the history here. Look at the stories this guitar. Look at the amount of songs that have been played in this guitar. 1942. Isn't that insane? And it just looks great. And it sounded great. Actually, sounded sounded on the brighter side. That makes me laugh when people say I like bright sounds because this is a vintage Martin that had... It wasn't a kind of woofy, muddy... It was a, it was a cutting, nice sound. It was cool. It, I was right up my alley. And I loved it. Oh, Spoon has an Addy Dread. Yeah, maybe at some point in the future I'll, I'll, I'll go to Spoon as well and we'll do some videos of his guitars. That'd be cool as well. I do think Spoon has excellent taste in Martins. I think we all know that. Come to Nasfest and play the pre-war. There we go, you see? When you go to Nasfest, it's like the Martin get-together. People have these guitars. 
I mean, for me, this is a... I don't want to sound like a snob. For me, this is it. You own this guitar, this is it. Like, that is a... Mar I, and I didn't want to say this on Monday. This has become... This is now becoming like the Martin... The Monday Martin Show B-roll program. Uh, uh, um, scraps. I hope Maury's not still watching. You know, for me, that's the real deal. That's a real Martin, right? That is it. That is the guitar that they played on the records. That is the real deal. But the problem is, it's also $32,000 plus tax. <laughs> and that's the reason why I would rather order like a custom from Maury, from Maury's music. I'd rather order an East Indian Rosewood, Addy Top, Long Saddle, maybe a marquee spec guitar with this neck. I think, I think, didn't Thomas Moore, didn't you do that? Someone did that. They basically ordered a marquee with the modern neck. That's exactly what I'm thinking. We're thinking alike here. Because I could sell everything I own in this room, including my camera and my computer, and buy this guitar, but that doesn't seem practical to me. But what a great thing. Isn't that, isn't that it? When we talk about Martin and everything, isn't that, isn't that what we're talking about? Tell me if I'm wrong. So, that's, oh, that's why I was looking at the Authentic. So Maury has a D18 Authentic, which is the mahogany. If he had the D28 Authentic, I probably would have bought it. But he has the mahogany one. I mean, it's just like, that's a whole new conversation, the way they age the guitars. Like, should you age an acoustic guitar, or should you, should you buy them new and age them yourself? Should you buy a Relic guitar? Well, the Authentic that I played at NAMM did feel really great. It felt like that old guitar you pull out of the closet from your, from your, you know, from your grandfather's house and you play it. That's exactly what it felt like. But at the same time, you're thinking, well, I paid a thousand dollars for them to take a, a knife of this and scratch it up. Essentially, don't know how I feel about that either. I'd like to get my hands on one. I'd like to review one, but we'll see. I'm glad Thomas agrees. Yes, they are awesome. Nothing compares. Of course, like that is it, isn't it? And look at the condition. The condition's excellent. The um, the history is there. It tells a story, and that is the real deal. That's it. So it'd be great to compare that to an authentic. Maybe an authentic aged and see how they compare. But yeah, but if you want that, you're going to have to pay for it. And that's that's a lot of on song gigs, right? <laughs> okay, so watch out for I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably do some content. I've, I've been speaking with Spoon about maybe doing a, a, a mini series on Vintage Martin. So if you find that interesting, then stay tuned and subscribe and ring the bell. Also, if you're in any Martin guitar groups, do me a favor and let them know about our Monday show. It's no, never a good idea when I tell people, hey, we're going live on Monday. Come and hang out. It's never the same as if Lee goes into the Martin Facebook group and says, oh, I had a good time on Monday. You should come and check it out next Monday. So I'd, I'd really appreciate that. Mark Johnson says, here's what I know about Vintage Martin we had. 65 D18 in the local shop. It had four cracks in it. We were cleated and professionally repaired, so we may not need to spend as much as we think, just shop. Yeah, but this is what I'm researching, Mark. I saw a Brazilian rosewood top guitar for sale online for around $8,000. So why was that $8,000 and this is $32,000? What makes these vintage Martins these prices? And that's why I want to do a video about it, so we can explore and, ex and discover why the prices are what they are, and which are the golden era, which are the ones that we should look out for in the local um, uh, you know, charity shops. <laughs> That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Actually, I must, I must reach out to a bass player friend of mine that told me a few years ago that he was, he found under his grandmother's bed, he found a vintage Martin Dreadnought. I must, I must text him and ask him what that was, because that's just insane. Family member has been offered a 30s Martin. Turn it down. I'm trying to get hold of myself. Okay. So the 30s, wow. That's, how, much, how much is that going to be, Lee? 30s Martin. But like I said, you've got to consider the condition, what's new, what's original. What if everything's been replaced on the guitar and the only thing that's original is the back and sides? What's the point of that? Is that really worth it? I don't think so. So, but anyway, this one on the screen, that's a cool guitar. Really, really cool. I loved it. Pretty great. All right, it's time for dinner in New York City. So I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks for hanging out with me. I just I love hanging out and chatting gear. So much fun. Uh, remember, I'm going to play some songs on Sunday, 4 p.m. EST. Monday with Maury. Always a great time with Maury. Can't wait for that. Maybe I'll get him to show me those Addy Top Martins he just got into stock because I have been looking at them. Um, 
Join the stand, subscribe, ring the bell. Check out my video from last night. I walked around the Gibson garage. That's a really cool place. So go and check that video out. And I'll see you next time. Have a great night. Take care. Be well. Thanks for joining me and hanging out. It's always a great time. Thank you. I'll see you later. Bye-bye. Oh, check out On Song. Use my link. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, hang on. £6,000? Yeah, but it depends what it is. If it's a mahogany small body guitar... I, I, anyway, Lee, that's why I'm doing these videos with Spoon. I need to figure out what makes these prices. Because some of these prices are affordable and some of these prices are off the charts. So stay tuned for that series. It'll be coming up in the, in the future sometime. All right. Later. Bye-bye.